Good morning, everybody. We're looking forward to two hours of fun with seismic evaluation and retrofit of existing buildings. Here's uh, the outline that we're going to cover. It's the timing is a little bit different from what Maria just mentioned, but it is in three sections. Uh, first, we're going to take a little walk through the document and talk about this important idea of performance objectives. Then we'll cover a couple of technical concepts in the second part. And in the third part, we'll talk about what's new in 4113 and uh, including uh, a, a big change that's coming in 4117, the new standard that's uh, being just finalized this year. ASE 4113 is a standard for seismic evaluation retrofit of existing buildings. If you've used the previous version of 41, you'll notice that the title has even changed because now what used to be a standard just for seismic retrofit is now for both evaluation and retrofit. So this new document, actually not so new anymore, combines two different uh, previous standards, ASC 31 and ASC 41. And we'll talk about that combination and what it means later in the, in the seminar. The important thing to know at this point is that ASC 41 is a standard. It's not a code. So it doesn't tell you what to do or when to do it. It just tells you how to do it. And the relationship between standards and codes is important to understand uh, if you want to use 41 correctly uh, or even uh, if you want to use it as a standalone document. So you're familiar with the model building codes. Most of you probably are still using the 2012 or maybe have just started using the 2015 IBC and possibly IEBC, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, these are model building codes. They are not the law. The law is the actual local building code is adopted by your jurisdiction. So normally that's adopted by the state. And in some cases, I'm showing San Francisco here, uh, a local city might even make further revisions to the state building code. So that's the law. The model, the, the model building code is just what it's based on, and, uh, but, but it itself gets uh, sometimes modified when it gets adopted. Now, each of these model codes uh, adopt certain standards. The model codes have evolved in a way that they, the IBC in particular is becoming more and more just a kind of a holding document. It has administrative provisions, but then there's a bunch of slots that we stick standards into. So when you do design of new buildings, you're familiar with ASCE 7. That is the standard for design of all new buildings, and it just gets slotted in to the IBC. The IEDC does something similar for existing buildings. The 2012 version slots in these two standards, ASCE 3103 and 4106. Those are the two that have now been replaced by ASCE 4113, but of course they're not adopted yet by the IEDC. We'll come back to that in a second. The point here is that codes and standards are different. Standards are referenced by codes, but the codes are actually, when they get adopted, the law that you're following. So it's not a code, and therefore it does not have a chapter one full of administrative provisions. It also doesn't tell you again what to do or when to do it. That comes from the code. At the same time, however, for a standard to be adopted by a code, it has to be written in kind of code-like language. So the standard is more than just a guideline. It's not just recommendations. When it gets invoked by the building code, it gets invoked with the force of law of the building code. So that's why you'll find it written in this uh, very stilted code language with all kinds of shells. It does have commentary as well, but it's in, written in code language. In essence, what a standard then becomes is just a 500-page definition. So when the code tells you make a building safe, the standard then steps in and with essentially 500 pages of provisions and commentary tells you what safe means or what immediate occupancy means. But it, it falls to the building code to tell you what, uh, uh, what you're, you're shooting for and the standard just tells you how to get there. So what starts that process for seismic evaluation and retrofit depends on the type of the project that you're doing. So I divide seismic evaluation and retrofit work into three types of projects. First are mandatory, uh, then triggered and voluntary. So mandatory work is when you have a building and a separate piece of legislation, separate from the building code itself, steps in and tells you, you're going to retrofit this building whether you wanted to or not, or at least you're going to evaluate it. And this is the kind of uh, a work that applies to uh, unreinforced masonry buildings that have been killing people in California for a long time. We have statewide or in local cities, uh, for example, mandatory programs that say you must retrofit these buildings, even if you didn't intend to do anything. We also have a program statewide 
for our hospitals. They get retrofitted to a different standard, but again, it's mandatory even if you didn't intend to do anything with that project. 